Climate change is a topic of hot debate, and with the record cold temperatures and the associated plant damage that we saw this past winter, it's hard to believe that the climate is in fact warming. But studies show that plants are leafing out and blooming a full one to two weeks earlier than in historic records. And this is due to the warmer temperatures. These warm temperatures have prompted the redrawing of our winter hardiness zone map. We also see an increase of extreme weather events such as flooding, ice storms, as well as even drought, and a shift in patterns of areas that historically had drought might have more rain, or warmer areas might be experiencing cooler temperatures. So what does all this change mean for the gardener? And what can we do as gardeners to slow or at least um, contribute less to this warming? Climate change can certainly make garden planning more of a challenge. Do we plant our vegetables earlier because of the warmer weather? Also, if we live in an area that was traditionally zone 6 but is now indicated as zone 7, does that mean we could go ahead and plant zone 7 plants? These are the types of questions that we need to face as gardeners as we experience climate change. One thing we could do is use plant indicators in the environment to time gardening events. And this is an area of science called phenology. Uh, scientists who study phenology study the life cycle events of plants and animals. And they look at indicators in the environment that correlate with activities uh, in animals such as hibernation or migration, and in plants with the timing of flowering, reproduction, um, leaf emergence. Think about spring and the changes that take place in the environment that tell you it's spring. This might be the flowering of your dogwoods or the leaves emerging on your bald cypress trees. These are all biological timing indicators. As gardeners, we use phenological events already as we design gardens that are colorful all season long. We can also use them to time the planting of our vegetable crops. In fact, these timing events might already be familiar to us through some of the sayings and rules of thumbs that our grandparents used, such as when we see the blossoms fall from our apple trees, it's time to plant our seed corn. Also, when the bearded iris is in bloom, we can set out our peppers and eggplants. We can plant tomato seedlings when the lily of the valley is in full bloom. And when we see new growth on our bur oaks and our grapevines, it's safe to set out our tender annuals, perennials, and vines. Phenology is also used to predict insect emergence. For example, the eastern tent caterpillar eggs hatch at the time of bud break on our flowering crab apples. So this would be the time that we begin scouting for this pest and begin a management plan. With the changing climate and drastic fluctuations from one year to the next, these phenological indicators may be our best tool for success in planting our vegetable crops at the proper time and also will serve as a wonderful tool in an integrated pest management program. Well, today scientists are studying phenology to look at how global warming and climate change affect organisms. By looking at the timing of biological events, they can gain a better understanding of how plants and animals are affected to the changing climate. You could participate by collecting phenological data in your area and contribute to these climate studies. For more information, visit the Project Budburst website and learn how you can participate. Also, the National Wildlife Federation has some wonderful resources about phenological events in your area. Visit their Wildlife Watch page to learn more. As gardeners, we can reduce our impact on climate change through five simple practices. When we're managing our landscapes, we can reduce carbon emissions by selecting manual tools instead of power tools. And if we are going to use power tools, let's select those that are electric as opposed to those that burn gas. When we make and use compost in the landscape, we not only 
reduce our contribution to landfills, but we're also replacing inorganic fertilizers that are very energy intensive to produce with organic fertilizers that also store carbon in the form of organic matter. And planting trees and shrubs in the landscape is an excellent way to take heat trapping carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it in plant tissues. Trees and shrubs are very long lived and they'll store that carbon for years to come. And when we mow our lawns, leaving those grass clippings in place will add nutrients back to the soil and again reduce the need for added fertilizers. Now keeping our soils covered is also a very important part of managing carbon. In fact, the key to storing carbon in the landscape is the soil. When we leave our, our gardens exposed, such as our flower beds and our vegetable gardens in the winter time, they not only are prone to wind erosion, but also carbon loss. But by planting a cover crop, we can store that carbon and that'll later be returned to the soil in the form of organic matter. Now gardening practices alone are not going to solve global warming, but they will play a small part to a much larger solution. You can learn more about your role as a gardener to climate change and even take the Climate Friendly Gardener Pledge at the website of the Union for Concerned Scientists. According to phenological indicators, we could plant our peppers and eggplant when the iris bloom and set out our tomatoes when the lily of the valley are in flower. Of course, we could use walls of water to set our plants out earlier and cheat the system a little bit. But the blooming iris tell me that it's time to set out our solanaceous crops, which include tomatoes, tomatillos, peppers, and eggplants. These are heat-loving plants that really thrive on warm, sunny conditions. And in fact, we want to wait until it's warm before we set them out, especially the eggplants, which are the most uh, cold sensitive. Now these are fairly large plants and they're going to need really good spacing for tomatoes and tomatillos that need to be about two feet apart. And for our peppers and eggplants, we could set those at 18 inches. Now these plants are going to benefit from a slow release um, or organic fertilizer and plenty of water as they get established. Also, mulching will help regulate soil moisture and it will help protect against certain soil-borne diseases. 